Hey streamers, welcome back to Stream University. Do you want to turn this into this? Stick around, it's not as easy as it looks. again for another episode of Stream University. Thank you for joining us. Today we're talking about green screens. Uh, I'm assuming you've bought a green screen or you're thinking about it. Maybe you've bought it and you've thrown it into OBS and it looks like crap. Maybe you've got it thrown into OBS and it actually looks pretty good and you're looking for those just few tweaks, those things you just don't know about yet that can help you get a, a, an amazing looking green screen um, scene behind you. Well, I hope that video can answer those questions for you today. Um, but first, uh, my Twitch link is right here. Come join the chat. If you've got questions, um, come show off what you're able to do after you watch this video. I'd love to see it. As we go through this video, I'm gonna show you videos of my setup so you can see how I achieve what's behind me right now. And there are four different things that we need to remember as we're setting up our green screen scene. That's a mouthful. Uh, the first one is enough lighting. Enough lighting kind of blends in with point number two, which we'll get to in just a second. But if you don't have enough lights that shine on your green screen, then you'll never be able to key out that green color that you paid so much money to buy. Um, your, your video camera has to be able to see nice green color. And if you're in a dark room, you've got one light that just shines on your face, that's not gonna work. You really need lighting if you're gonna do this. You went out and you spent the money to have this green screen. Obviously you're trying to do something a bit more than what other people are doing on Twitch. And that's awesome. That's, that's awesome but you're gonna have to get some lights. Uh, more than likely, you're gonna have to get some lights unless you're just in this house of lights. All right, point number two that you wanna remember is you've got enough lights, but is it even? You've gotta have nice, even light if you wanna key out that green color. In OBS, you're gonna enter a filter, a chroma key filter, and it's gonna pull out all the green or all the blue, whatever color green screen you have, but you only have one shot to pull it out. You got some settings to play around with, but what you want is you want nice, even green. That way it can pull all that green out together and not leave some artifacts on the screen. You've probably seen streamers with artifacts on their screen, maybe some worse than others, but that's the result of poor lighting. So that's why you buy enough lights and that's why you position them in such a way that it's nice and even. Point number three, this may or may not apply to you in your situation, but a lot of people have the cloth green screens, the fabric um, semi-rigid kind of green screen. And if that's what you've got, that's what you've got. It's gonna get the job done the same, but you may need to de-wrinkle it. If it came wrapped up and folded up in a package, or maybe it's been sitting in your closet for a while, whatever the case may be, if your screen is wrinkled, it's not going to be the best at providing nice even uh, a nice even green. And so when your lights bounce off of it, they're not going to hit quite right. They're going to be going through all those little contours in the fabric. So if you have to take it out, iron it, do what you got to do. Number four and our last tip of the day. So you've got enough lighting, you've got even lighting, you're de-wrinkled, but you got to make sure that all that light you brought into your scene isn't casting shadows in the wrong place. Because if they're casting right behind you onto your green screen, you've got a problem. You're not gonna have even lighting on your green screen, something that we just talked about. So how do we mitigate all of our front lighting? How do we mitigate that so that we don't cast a shadow? Well, there's several things you can do. The first thing that you can do, the best thing that you can do, is get your green screen as far behind you as you can. The thing that I've found though is that Unless you're buying a big cloth piece, like a huge cloth piece, the farther back it goes, the bigger it's gotta be. Um, the farther you get away from the camera, the bigger that green screen has to be to fill up your entire space. So, you know, in the price range that I was looking at, it was very difficult to get something that was gonna be, you know, like eight feet behind me. This one right now, it's probably like three feet behind me. So. You can do other things like have lights at the base of your green screen that overcome the shadows that are being cast from the front. That's probably the best thing you can do is just add additional lighting kind of either to the side of you or behind you uh, at the base of the green screen that overcomes the shadows. Inevitably though, if you've got 
a bunch of light shining in front of you, you've got to figure out a way to overcome the shadows that are going to be hitting your chair, your body, and going right on that screen that you're trying to light. So this is my desk setup. You can see I've got one key light on the left side of my desk, and then I have a fill light on the right side of my desk, and those both point towards me and my chair right here in the middle of the desk. But you can see behind here, I do have shadows being cast, not one, but two, since I've got two lights. So two shadows right behind the chair. Now, I've also got a hair light. Um, that's another, you know, kind of important piece to the lighting scheme. That's gonna cast some light on the back of my chair and on my head to separate me from my background. But then I use these lights at the base of my green screen. They're actually green lights shining onto the screen to even out that green color. So now let's go into OBS, let's add the filter and play around with the settings to see what happens with each of them so you can get familiar and be able to optimize your setup. So you go down here to the plus sign and add the chroma key filter. Once you're in it, um, I chose green because I have a green screen. You may have a blue screen or a magenta screen. It'd be very odd, but you may have one of those. So pick your, your, uh, your screen color here. There's also an option for a custom color. Unfortunately, you can't use like an eyedropper tool to pick that up from somewhere a live feed of your screen. But if yours came with something with some paperwork that said, hey, use FF000FF or whatever, you could type that in here to get the exact color, which is great. Um, but I'm just gonna choose green. You know, I've never had any problems when I just chose the default green that they have for me. You can see my settings here. Your mileage may vary, 405, 70, 100, 100. Those may not work for you. It all depends on your lighting. It depends on your green. It depends on a lot of different things. It depends on the weather. Um, but here's what I have, and I'm gonna show you what happens as we mess with some of these. So first I'm gonna mess with similarity. That takes the green that's been chosen for you by OBS, it takes that green, and it's gonna broaden or restrict what kind of green it's looking for. So if you just say green, it, you know, that would be dial and similarity all the way up. It's going to take out green and then everything else beyond that. See? Bye-bye. But if you make it more strict, it's going to be very particular with the green it's looking for. Eventually, it's going to knock it back to where it's not keying out anything. So as we go down, see, it starts with the edges, which has to do with lighting. And it's going to go and... You know, whatever OBS's green is, it's obviously not my green screen because at one, it's not working. So we got to dial that back up. I had it at 405. Uh, this actually is kind of touchy, so you want to get pretty close. Smoothness. What I equate this to is the edges of like my chair and my arms and stuff, the things that are actually touching the green background when you're looking at the 2D image here, it's gonna soften it up. So I've got mine at 70. If you take it too high, I go bye-bye again. But if you take it too low, your image may get kind of crispy and jaggedy along the contours of your body. So I've kept mine at 70. Um, I think the default is somewhere close to there. My, my values are not far off from the defaults. So we'll, we'll put it back at 70. And then uh, key color spill reduction. Color spill is what happens when you've got the green screen in your background and all these lights are shining off in your studio and that green reflects onto your clothing. So you can kind of mitigate that by taking up this color spill reduction. But now it's a 1950s sitcom. So the, the more you take that up, the less green is gonna be spilled on you, but however, you may you may look a little black and white. You may look a little noir by the end of it. So default value is 100, I believe, so I'm gonna knock it back there. If you take it under 100, I, I don't see what's really happening here, but I'm gonna leave it at 100. Below that, you get into an opacity, but if you're adding a green screen, uh, a color key, so to speak, a chroma key, then you wouldn't be messing with opacity. You can do a final adjustment on contrast, bright, uh, contrast, brightness, gamma, if you'd like to do that here, which I've actually dialed that in just a little bit myself. One more thing I did want to point out and be on the lookout for this because I discovered it the hard way. Uh, I thought I had my settings dialed in just the way I wanted them and then I did this. 
I smiled and my teeth, uh, not a good look, not a good look. So if you, if you think you're there, maybe just do a, a quick smile and see if your teeth are starting to disappear. I've collected Amazon links for all the stuff that I've bought for my stream and my studio. So you can find those below in the description, the exact green screen, the exact lights and stands and all those kinds of things that I use. You can find those all below. With all that being said, if I've done my job right today, you are well on your way to optimizing your green screen for all your uses on Twitch and Mixer and Facebook Live, DLive, YouTube, Instagram video, Periscope, all those different things, you're well on your way. So, hey, come back and see us on Stream University. We'll see you next time. What's up here, dude? What's up, Victor? Like, what, what, what am I going to run into up here? Oh, God.